was Friday night, and I was standing in the kitchen near the table, the same table that we as a family had shared hundreds of meals together over the past 13 years. And my middle son asked a question. Dad, will you take us to the movie tomorrow? Nope, I'm busy, he responded. It was all that I could do to get out of the house and into my car and drive far, far away. I'm driving down the road and tears are streaming down my face. Busy. Busy with what? Living with another woman and having an affair, that's what. But we were his family and these were his sons. I don't know why his response surprised me. We hadn't seen him on a weekend in over 12 months. But this night, it hit different. It cut deeper. So I'm driving along. I can't see the road. I pull over. I just want to talk to somebody so that I can calm down, go back home, and play games with my sons. I'd promised them that we would play games that night. I didn't want to disappoint him, not like he did. I'm texting some friends, and finally someone responds and says, hey, I can't talk tonight, but I'll give you a call tomorrow. I thought, tomorrow? I'm not sure I'll be here tomorrow. Can someone hurt this bad and keep living? I'm seven years old, and I'm laying in my bed, and there's screaming going on outside the door. And I pull the covers up over my head to cover my ear to drown out the arguing and the drama. Why was there always fighting? My biological father had already left, not this one too. And little Evie laid there that night and wondered, how do you get a daddy to stay? How do you make a marriage work? And that night, little Evie was determined to figure it out. Little Evie decided she was going to look for a magic wand and create her own happily ever after. It was little Evie trapped inside this woman's body, standing in that kitchen on that Friday night, wishing and hoping, waiting and wanting for that magic wand, the happily ever after, and for this daddy to stay. I just knew that I could figure it out I could make it work. If I could read enough books, gather enough information, and love him more, he'd be the daddy that stayed. I go into my bedroom, and a book literally calls me from the shelf. So I go over. I pull the book off the shelf. I sit down in my chair and just let it fall open. And I read a story about a woman who was married to a cheater and a liar, alcoholic. They had all the problems. They got a divorce. And he moved on. That is until she began to study and found out about the power of gratitude. And she began to be thankful for all the things, even the things she didn't like. Long story short, he came back home, they remarried, and they got there happily ever after. I slammed the book and thought, what in the world? 
Am I supposed to be thankful and grateful that my husband's having an affair and living with another woman? Surely not. No, thank you. That is until five days later, a stranger handed me a book. She said this book changed her life. So I am excited about it. I go home, open the book, and read it, and the message was clear. Be thankful and grateful for everything, even the things you don't like. (laughs) Not this again. I don't think so. It's another Friday night, and I'm standing next to my bathtub, and it's so painful because we don't hear from my husband. Here I am raising three teenage sons all by myself. And I think, I don't like this. Be thankful and grateful even for the things you don't like. Those words rang in my head. (laughs) Well, I guess I could try it. I've tried everything else. I've read all the books. I've gone to all the conferences, and I've had therapists and counselors, and still the situation stays the same. So standing there that Friday night beside my bathtub, I crafted a sentence that had some thread of truth to it that I could actually make come out of my mouth. It went something like this. I'm thankful and grateful that we are not hearing from my husband and he's not texting, because if he was supposed to, he would. I did it. I wasn't happy about it. I didn't like it. I didn't really even agree with what I was saying, but I did it. And then I slipped into the tub to wash away all that heartbreak. That is until the next day when all that pain came back. And standing there again with tears streaming down my face, I crafted another sentence. I'm so thankful and grateful that my husband's not here today because if he was supposed to be, he would. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it again and again and again. And the more I practiced gratitude, the more my heart began to settle and the more I experienced peace and calm. And you know what? That gratitude stuff, it was like taking that magic wand and waving it over my entire being and changing me into a whole new person. Wasn't changing my situation, but it was changing me. And I realized I didn't have to control my husband, I didn't have to control my marriage. I didn't have to control anything. And that was freedom. And then I realized, I don't have to live like this anymore. And even though little Evie wanted that marriage to work, the happily ever after, and this daddy to stay, it was clear that wasn't going to happen. And so with peace and resolve, I said to my husband, I think it's time we get a divorce. And just like that, 26 years of marriage ended just like it started with a little bit of ink on a legal document. but I was free, and radical gratitude paved the way, and I was able to buy land and build a cabin in Oklahoma, all this on a teacher's salary. I built a rental cabin that will knock your socks off. I bought two campers, more land, and began to rent my home of 30 years, began to rent it out. Then I became a social media influencer 
so that I could help other people who have been betrayed and broken. And some of my videos have gone viral. Some have gotten over a million views. <laughs> and I help women who have been trapped in trauma and stuck in bad relationships. And I show them about gratitude and how to choose themselves. And one day I was telling my story, and I realized I didn't get that one forever lasting marriage or the happily ever after I'd hoped for. But what I discovered is I was living happily even after. and showing others how to do the same, and that's fun. And I can show you all how to, to do radical gratitude and experience radical gratitude, and it can change your entire world. It is so easy, and it's free. And I can show you right now, right here, how to do it. Next time you experience something that you don't like, or maybe if you think of a situation that's already happened that you don't like, maybe you're mad at somebody, angry at somebody, somebody's hurt you, I want you to think of some part of that that you could be thankful for, even the parts you don't like. And you may be saying to me, because I've heard it before, I can't be thankful for that. I understand. And you might even be saying, you don't know what I've been through. And I get it. But here's the thing. Radical gratitude can change the situation. It may sound like nonsense. It may seem impossible to be thankful even for the things you don't like. It may even sound like a bunch of crap. That's what it sounded like to me. But here's what I want you to do. The next time you come across a situation that you don't like, crap it. C-R-A-P. This is my crap framework that you can follow. C is crap a sentence that you can may come out of your mouth that has some thread of truth to it. R, recite it, repeat it, ruminate over it. Ruminate over and over and over. A, accept what's happening. Because here's the thing, here's what I found out. Things are always working out just like they're supposed to, even when it doesn't make sense. And the more you resist, the more it persists. And so accept it and P, push through. Push through, practice, practice, practice. This practicing, saying these gratitude things, will propel you to your power. And the, it'll propel you and push past the pain again into your power. That's how you can begin your radical gratitude journey. After my gratitude journey, I thought, I am invincible. All the hard stuff is behind me, and all of life's hardest tests have been passed. That is until one day I heard. His cancer's returned, and there's nothing we can do about it. No, no, he's only 16 years old, he's too young. And once again, I just knew that if I could study enough and gather enough information and get him to the right doctors, I could take care of it. 
I could make a son stay. But once again, there wasn't anything I could do about it. And Colson, my youngest son, didn't stay. Four days after his 17th birthday, he was gone. I didn't understand it then, and I still don't understand it now. And I spent years grieving, tears, devastation, and then finally, I found my way back to gratitude. And I began to be thankful, even for what I didn't like. And I began to craft sentences, and one of them went something like this. I'm thankful and grateful that Colson was here the exact amount of time he was supposed to be. I chose to believe that his time here on earth was full, filled, not cut short, even though it felt like it. And I would repeat this over and over. And finally, I got past the pain and began to see the grander picture. Because here's the thing, life doesn't always turn out like we plan. And things don't go the way we expect. And it's okay. Sometimes it's more painful than we think we can live through, but we do. And so my life has had twists and turns and heartbreaks. But what I know about those twists and turns and heartbreaks is they have led me right here, right now, to this very place with you tonight. And I want to encourage you that no matter what has happened in your life, you too can live happily, even after. <laughs>